Se go go go. What hat kala dene nen yong yaks. Ko kwaho orinasyoni kanyak kahake ungo hoe akusasrona de gidelo. So hi everybody. Uh, I uh, introduce myself in uh, our language here, upstate New York. We're kanyak kahake, which is people the flint, but uh, history has us as Mohawks. So and my sanction named is he turned around. But my government name is Harvey, so you can see it on the screen. That's that's me. <laughs> uh, I'm Wolf Clan. I'm from the people of the Haudenosaunee, the Confederacy, and I'm here in Akwesasne, upstate New York. And uh, we got a little rain coming down most of the morning, pouring at times and stuff. So uh, hopefully we won't lose our connection. But uh, like anything that we do. Before we actually start up, we do what we call the Honda uh, Galawadikwe, which is the words before all outs. So uh, if Moon is going to bring it up, I'm going to do the opening. And with our slide, we should have the, the side thing here. And he'll go through it as I go through it. And uh, it's a simple opening. Back in history, it took us four days uh, four hours of time to actually do this. We didn't have to race home and watch soap operas or watch TV or anything like that. So we had a lot of time. So we would take that time to give that thanks given to everything and we'd break it right down. So of course now with the hustle and bustle of everything, we've shortened it up. But this, this is almost as short as I can make it. So. So what I'm saying is, it's let us put our minds together as one. But with our language, it's kind of backwards. So we say, our minds together as one, we will greet and acknowledge. So then that unguesu'a, what you see there, translates to the people. Unguehume is translates to original beings. So we still have controversy over that because we say that we're Ungwehuma, but everybody's Ungwehuma because everybody's an original being from where they're from. So it all works out the same. So then Idinotahakne Ungwatnigunla is to say, let your mind become with that, you know, like fill that mind with that good thoughts about what we're talking about. So the people if I was making the long version, I would acknowledge like the teachings and uh, behaviors and the continuations of the education, the ceremonies and everything like that. But uh, I just wanted to explain that for this first one. Now I'm just going to go right through to the end. So. Tanu Tonya Askadoya ne unguat ni guna, the notinitin of Horado, ne, Skanya Dalio, Tonya Tanazwani Gona. 
Aspetoja ne on kuin niin kuuna, että nyt ei tehty niin paraatio, ne on kuin ja tiso, toni ja tarzoa niin kuuna. And a lot of times when we get done, we'll take that time to uh, apologize for anything we have omitted, mispronounced, or anything we did, it was not to offend anything. So we ask that be taken care of at this time. Uh, some people add in your own words, if I did forget something, to put it in your minds and give that thanksgiving to whatever that it was that I forgot. So, but that's how we do our opening in, uh, to, to acknowledge all these things that, uh, that circle of life, to understand that where we are as human beings, to acknowledge that circle all the time whenever we gather, get together, or anything like that. So, and another way, as men, we have what's called Aduma songs. And that's, that was our personal songs that part of that coming of age as men, we would go fasting. And uh, the fasting wasn't the same as uh, sometimes where you don't eat or anything. We could take a peanut butter jelly sandwich with us. Uh, of course, we didn't have it back then. But that was like a joke. Huh? So anyway, <laughs> we would go out into the woods and uh, sit there and build a fire, a little lean-to, and we'd stay there till we would get a song. Then when we get back, we share our song at a certain time of the season to the community, and that was considered our song. So in that Thanksgiving we just did, we would sing our song also. So that gave extra credence to this, uh, the kindness, responsibilities, and uh, acknowledgement. So that that's same thing with the smudging. I know some of the things I'm gonna walk over there and show. I can't see what it looks like on the screen. So that same thing with the smudging. We do those things in the morning. We do this opening in the morning or the beginning of everything to set our minds in a good place, huh? to remember where we are as human beings in this world and what our responsibilities are. So another with that way of them song. So, uh, we're going to sing uh, uh, two verses of a song just to, again, to set that intent of uh, what we're doing and everything to set that pace and clear that mind out. Because when we're focused on those things that takes away from all this animosity and things of the world and brings us back into this area of self, whether it's self-reflection, self-acknowledgement, but being able to share that with everybody to have that because... We're lucky we're in the back here, back in what we call the man cave. And uh, we have cement floors and we got things plastered, holes in the walls, we hang things and we wrestle every once in a while, have a tag team match and everything. And we get off that steam. So up front, the cars go by and it, we, it takes our attention away. We start looking at, hey, who's that? Oh, look at them, they got a new truck, you know. So, so. <laughs> but we don't need that a lot of times when we're getting serious, huh? There's my serious face. I got here. So, <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna share a song for you. Oh, 
So that was actually a couple of verses of the Robin dance. And the uh, Robin dance also is uh, for new beginnings. So because of the springtime, huh, the, uh, the Robin is the first bird to come out. So just like what we're doing here, we're beginning. So it's a new beginning of this workshop, seminar, whatever, how it's going to go for the month and everything. It's all part of that. So we always start off to acknowledge that it's a new day. It's a new time. It's a new workshop. It's a new anything. So we look at that from, technically we're still in spring even. So even spring is still a new beginning of a new year. So we're just starting to make that transition, right? A couple more weeks, it's going to be the, what is it? The solstice? Solstice, right? No, or is it equ equinox? Equinox. One of solstice. The, uh, the solstice. Summer solstice, yeah. So we're, we've been working on a sweat lodge. So hopefully we're going to get a sweat in, and but we will sweat on the solstice too because of that time of uh, all that change, we want to make that acknowledgement and uh, present that to the universe kind of thing. So right now, I'm going to let my uh, coworkers introduce themselves. Yes, you got on the wrong camera, that's why. So, Sego Gwego, the Sukwa Yungats, Akuza Slono, Hodinishoni, Kenyakaga, Ungahua, and uh, the Wist to Wist. Uh, my Mohawk name, uh, the Sukwa, means uh, he's picked it up, and with the last almost in nine days, no, eight days, okay. eight days, I have my four years of sobriety. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, with, with me picking up my name again, I, th I think it goes well. Um, and just a little bit of uh, about myself, you know, um, it's been a real honor to have been given this opportunity to work here. And it's, uh, it's really uh, been really good, you know, f uh, finding things that, uh, that were wrong with myself and getting things to change and, I couldn't have done it without the help of everybody here, you know, including including standing the trees back up, seven dancers, saplings to cedars, and Partridge and Partridge House, and everybody that's uh, that's that's come through the doors, you know, even to <laughs> oh my god, Harry's in the background making fun of me, and I I keep going off of what he's saying now too. <laughs> So now I got my other coworker doing the same thing. So you know what? I'm, I'm going to share this story real quick. So Harvey had talked about it, right? Of getting the sweat lodge up, and uh, so my buddy plays the. If anybody knows wrestling, WWF, WWE. If anybody knows Hulk Hogan, right? His old entrance music. Well, he played that. So then I got right into it, right? Got into the movements, listening. Then. Got out here flexing. Then it was one more. You know, that's that's just how we do it, though. You know, and I see you guys' smiley faces on here, and but that's that's the comfortable ability that uh, that I've been given here. You know, and even one of the other nights we did a talking circle, and I was in tears. And uh, I'm gonna let one of my other coworkers go into that. And uh, but it's it's been good. You know, life is good. 
I get to do a lot of different things around here that I've never done in a job. Um, being the tech guy, uh, being assistants to both these uh, gentlemen, and it's just been a, it's been a great honor, and I'm I'm glad I'm here, and uh, that's all I have. You know, no, 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 um, I'm Harvey's uh, new assistant, but I've been, I've been around here for a little while. You know, I just uh, recently graduated college in August of, 20, of last year. And uh, throughout my years, college years, I've been interning with uh, seven dancers through the summers and stuff like that. So um, I'm pretty uh, familiar with uh, what goes on here and stuff like that. So um, like... Uh, I follow, I've, I've been following Harvey for a while now. You know, I have uh, over 12 years of sobriety. And I, I went through um, Parcha Chos myself, you know, and I met him there. And, you know, I, li I like the things that he would say. And so I, so I continued to follow him from there. And then until he got sick of me, but he's, he's well, I mean, I even follow him around sometimes. And he kicks me out the car and sometimes, you know. And But like, I, like Moon, my buddy, co-worker Ron was saying, you know, it's good good fun times you know and that's that's what it's about to be in sobriety and stuff like that but um i'm here now i got a new job as a, his assistant you know until i get sick of me again and you know we'll, we'll, we'll see where that goes from there you know and that's all i got you know no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my name's Galat Dodo. It means he stands amongst the healthy trees. And um, when I first came to work at Seven Dancers, um, Harvey and Amy had an interview. And they, after the interview, I said, well, what's the name of your program? And they said, uh, standing the trees up. We're, we're here to bring healthy men together and, and help them stand back up. And I said, well, that's what my name means too. So uh, I accepted the job and uh, I'm here. Uh, I worked at Partridge House for a while. Um, I, I worked with uh, youth with the, before it was Akwazasne Boys and Girls Club. It was um, Boys and Girls Club of America. I think they were, they set up a, um, a building here and they, they had that and I was working with them with the youth of Akuzasne and that was like uh, in 1998, 99, 2000. So um, these days I, I see some of those um, youth that I was working with and you know when I see them doing good you know I'm happy for them and I, I we say hello to each other and we, we still um, have that relationship almost uh, uncle, nephew, type of relationship and uh, so when we see each other we say hello and um, some some are doing well and some some aren't and uh, some are not here anymore uh, they, they passed on so every day that uh, that we do this work I know that um, it's a life and death situation it, it may not it may not be that way right now today but it, it ends up a life and death situation for many of us here. So I've been working here for, been working with Harvey here. I worked with him at the Partridge House and, uh, and over here. Seems like forever. <laughs> it's really been a few years, like three, four years or something. But uh, I really enjoy um, his teachings. And I've, um, I've lived a, a very, uh, I've, I've, experienced many things in my life you know many uh good things but many uh traumatic things also and i feel like i've gained so much strength from everything i've gone through just being able to continue to walk forward you know continue to uh, carry that good message that good mind uh, even in this day of uh, coronavirus you know i really um my family 
we we remain safe. We I, I wear this mask so that I don't uh, I don't bring anything home to them. You know the children ain't vaccinated yet, and we are, but the children ain't. So I still have to uh, maintain that safety around them. That's my job. That's my duty as a man to provide protection for uh, for the women, the children, the elders. You know, and um, I, I really I'm really honored to be. Every time somebody asks me to to do something. Uh, I'm truly humbled by it because uh, because I still remember where I was, you know, before. So these days I remember that uh, how, how truly humbled I am that people ask me to do things. <laughs> I don't understand why, but but they ask me, and uh, if I can, I I do my best with what what, what I've been given. Um, I wanted to mention the uh, residential. I don't even say those words anymore. I just want to um, put in put in our thoughts the the young Ungwehuwe, the young children that are not here anymore, and that we all put our strengths together so that they may have a safe journey back to the sky world. And um, Donato, I'm done. Oh no. <laughs> mystery. It's a mystery. Sego, uh, Guego. Yeah, so that's the uh, co workers and uh, Dawi is extra fun because he's on the clock, then he's off the clock, and then he's on the clock, but he's still here. <laughs> he finished up when he was doing his schooling and that, he was here getting paid to hang out with us, and then his, the schooling ended, and then he still hung out with us, and then he got back on the clock under another program, and he went back off, but he still comes and still helps us do so many things. Huh? He's uh, <laughs> He's a good helper, man. He's a good helper. He'd, he'd probably help dig his own grave if he had the chance, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so with that, too, I got a... Job is going to go through a, a slide here and uh, share a few things as to what does it actually consist of. So I have a, a regular... Uh, like a 40-week program to a 60-week program. And I can knock that down to a 20-week program. If uh, It all depends on what brings you here. So... Uh oh, that wasn't the one to pull, I guess. Oh no! <laughs> I'm just randomly pulling this. This is yeah. cool. Sorry. Take them all off then, or put it in a cup. Oh, I can go with this. That worked beautifully. Who needs a tripod? Take the video. Yeah, there you go. You know, plug it. Plug it now. No, don't do it. Why? I don't know. Oh, it's broke. So, th this is back to one of the pictures I showed uh, with uh, smudging. <coughs> and uh, it shows the direction, the medicines. You look like towards the south. The, we got sweet grass, in the east is the cedar, in the north is the tobacco, in the west is the sage. There's a medicine ball there, the, the matches, a couple of rattles, the drumstick, eagle feathers, tobacco ties, and uh, we call this our medicine bundle. So as we go through, we get gifted, pick up things and like that, so when we smudge, uh, the smudging is uh, 
about truth to me. I ask people, you know, what is it to smudge? Do you know about smudge? And a lot of people smudge. And I'm like, do you know why you smudge? And a lot of people say, clear the mind. It's to clear the mind. And I'm like, but if you clear your mind, it's like that uh, whiteboard. You wipe it clear, right? I said, then there's nothing there. So sometimes we're doomed to continue doing the insanity thing. So we, re we repeat history if we didn't learn or don't have that lesson in our mind. I said, so what I want to do is to understand the truth. I need to understand the truth. What's really happening? You know, people talk like we do. We hack on each other, this and that. What does it really mean? What are they really saying? Things like that. So it's how do we interpret this? And a lot of times our memory carries a negative. So when we hear certain things, we go negative. We remember negative, not good enough, less than, uh, insecure, low self-esteem, all these things that happen. Huh? Especially when we deal with domestic violence, sexual assault, addictions. So where did that come from? What did we know? So we learn. We learn many behaviors that aren't always good for us. So if we start that day off again with simple smudging and look at these truths and acknowledge these truths. So I smudge over my head to understand these truths. I smudge my eyes to see these truths. I smudge with my ears to hear these truths. I breathe in some smoke and exhale that so I can speak in truth. I smudge to my heart to feel those truths. You know, again, with domestic violence and relationship, you know, we say, I love you. But the actions don't match the words. So there's confusion there, huh? Like, wait a minute. But if I watch mom and dad go through that, it's normalized. So a lot of younger relationships are based on aggressiveness, confrontation, judgment, old baggage, things like that. So how do we how do we deal with that? So we gotta take that time to break it down and look at it and so we start that day over every morning. We start that day over and uh, we're smudging to set the intent of truth for that day. Sometimes that lasts is an hour. <laughs> Sometimes that might make it to noon before things start happening, where we start manipulating that truth again. We start acknowledge different things, like saying things like, well, I'll finish that tomorrow. I'm, I, I, I can do this right now. And then tomorrow it doesn't happen. So... And I'm just thinking of a phone call I was supposed to make now that I didn't make yet because of now I got to try to put it in to before five o'clock. So, because I've been doing something else, see, I forgot. But instead of beating myself up over forgetting, I got to accept it. I, I, I didn't do what I was supposed to do, so I got to let it come up again. So the same thing with relationship. If I know the truth and my part in it, I don't have to blame somebody else or take it out on somebody else. So going back to that Thanksgiving address with this and everything that sets that intent for that day. And the more I practice this, the more solidified it gets into my daily routine and the more I'm able to start my day over. The more I'm able to reboot and say, okay, that's what happened. I'm not going to let it affect my whole day. I'm going to start my day over from now. So I'll try again. Try again, you know. So go to the next one, John. Here's our creation story and a Thanksgiving address in one. But you see all the symbolisms around with uh, the Mother Earth, the Turtle Island, and how it comes around. And all those things I mentioned in a Thanksgiving is in there, the people, and the fish, the waters, and the medicines, and the berries, and the three sisters, and it goes right around. And all that's the way when that creation was with that woman that's on that turtle's back, did her walk to create Mother Earth. She walked counterclockwise and she did a shuffle, which is uh, the woman shuffle today that they still dance and still practice to this day. And uh, they, they added verses every year. They have verses added to it. And uh, there's like 500 verses to this uh, women's dance in honor of the women. Honor of the life givers. And uh, so we'll sing that. Maybe we'll share a couple of those a uh, little later. Just uh, share that words and share that song. Huh? 
So go to the next one. This is uh, one of the big ways to start to acknowledge these things. And it's uh, the two-way value system. We have the res on the left and you have the urban on the right. So when we leave the reservation for whatever reasons, like me, I'm, I'm, uh, I was anyway, I guess I can say I'm not anymore. I was a union iron worker. And when I was 16, I left the res and traveled about the Turtle Island and worked in many cities. And then I started to learn how to drink and drug and all that. So I got lost for a while. I came home to a rehab that I ended up working in, the Partridge House. Uh, both these guys mentioned that, uh, actually all of them did. And I got to be a client there and I learned something about myself. And uh, I say it took me 20 years to get out of there. <laughs> but uh, I, I did my time. I got out and then the, the guy that was the director there asked me to help out. And I went over and I did a few talks and stuff and uh, they ended up hiring me. So I've been there for 22 years. I actually worked there. So that's why I say I finally retired from there a couple of years ago. So I said, I finally got out. I finally got it. I finally smartened up. They let me out. So then I got over here to Seven Dancers and was talking with Amy. And she says, to, she's looking at a program and stuff and asked me if I was interested. And I actually really wanted a year off in between, but she says, guess what? I got some funding. Let's do this. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I, we waited like two weeks and then I end up sitting down with her and started to uh, design it, get the policies together and all this stuff. So we worked on that for a while and we got it going. And that's what uh, we look at it, standing that tree up, like Galadodo says, you know, we got to get that mine and our grieving. They talk about the mine is on the ground. When we lose somebody we love, we, uh, we have to look at that. Our mind is on the ground, right? We're sad. And uh, in our ways, we talk about the, the selfishness of that. We're, we, we're allowed to grieve, but we grieve a certain length of time. Then we start to practice the so-called getting over it or coming to terms with it or things like that. Huh? Because uh, we were told that uh, that grieving, if we grieve too hard, the spirit stays back because it wants to be with us to help us to get through the grieving stages. Huh? So we, we need to understand that... Uh, for me, it's really because how it makes me feel, I wish they were still here instead of being happy. Like say, looking at it from a Christianity thing that if we pass and go to heaven, that's supposed to be the most beautiful place anywhere. So why would I feel bad that they're making it to this heaven or happy hunting grounds for us, I guess. And uh, say, like, why would I be miserable about that? So it's kind of my missing them, my feeling abandoned, my feeling lonesome, my pain, and like that. So I have to look at it. Instead of rejoicing, I want to be in self-pity. So I got to understand that with this, what's more of a traditional side and what's more of the urban side from living in a city and how do I view things? So that really affects me. If you can, if you can read it on the very bottom, it says frustration, anxiety, and stress. So that's really the main ingredients of domestic violence, sexual assault, and addiction. We get too frustrated, you know, we want to take that medicine, self-medicate. We get too afraid, guilt, fearful, delusional. We get anxiety, we want to calm down. So again, we want to self-medicate. And in stress, if the world ain't act in the way I think it should act, I get all stressed out, so I want to self-medicate. And it's the confusion of not knowing what side I'm living on. You know, I, I get uh, confused. When I get confused, I don't know how I'm acting, how, how I'm conducting myself. So, go ahead, Joey. It's healthy role models again. You know, we go back to where does this come from? What, what is it to be a man? You know, I grew up to be a man was to be an iron worker, to have kids at an early age, drink hard, drive fast. That's what a man was. Fight a lot, too, in between. Die young. Die young, yeah. Go out like a warrior. That used to be the, the model throughout Turtle Island. It's, it's a good day to die. So we, we go out and we do whatever we have to do because it could be 
a good day to die. And one day I was in out west in uh, New Mexico and this uh, elder gentleman, Marcellus Williams was his name. And uh, he asked that question on stage. He had like 50 something years sober. And he asked that question, you know, is it a good day to die? And like the audience were all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. And uh, I, uh, you know, it was like a slap in the face to me because I'm out there, you know, I'm, I'm becoming part of that. You know, let's make the movement, you know, let's do good. Let's get sober. Let's take over again. Let's do this right. And when he said that, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. I Wait, what? <laughs> he says, anybody can die. You know, you can kill yourself, suicide, OD, get in a car wreck, a fight, gunfight, gains, fall off a building. Any, he says, it's the easiest thing in the world is to die. He says, the hardest thing in the world is to be a real man. I was like, wait, what? What, the, what are you saying? <laughs> and he says, yeah, he says, to respect the women, to honor the elders, and to teach the children good morals. He says, that's what a man does. And I had to really look at that. I, I had to really look at it and see how backwards. That's why I like my name. He turned around. So I was living my life backwards, being drunk, disorderly, analytical, chauvinistic, cheating, SOB, manipulating guy. <laughs> and wonder why nobody liked to hang out with me. <laughs> So I searched that truth huh, and found out I was all those things and I didn't like it. So I needed to change. So this is some healthy role model ships and uh, where it comes from. White Bison puts out a lot of good stuff. I take that and I look at it and I incorporate it into our way and uh, what works for a lot of people here. And uh, cause that's one of the diversity of it from a traditional AA standpoint, traditional NA standpoint to the medicine wheel, to well variety, to our own uh, cultural teachings, to uh, utilize the mouth. Go ahead, John. So this, this is another one. I found out from the two-way value system, there's actually a three-way value system. And uh, so there's a lot of confusion. Huh? We look at the triangle, the European model, and uh, the linear, which is the modern model, and then the holistic, which is more traditional. So looking at that European, that's the hierarchy, huh? excuse me, the hierarchy, who's, who's the boss? So that we always got to answer to somebody. We look at right all the way up to the kings and the queens, down from God, the angels, everything all the way down. Then there's that little door there, that's the gatekeeper. Huh? I, I ask a lot of times, you know, who is that? Who is the gatekeeper? And uh, <laughs> we call them receptionists around here. All right, you go into that building and in order to go to the next level, you got to get past the receptionist. Oh, wait, 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 you got an appointment? Okay, are you on time? Who are you seeing? Is it this, is it that? You got the papers, you got insurance, you, you know? And if you get past her, then you go sit in another room and wait to get taken to the next level, to the next level, till you actually get to see doctor, dentist, lawyer, whatever. Especially now with COVID, huh? it, it's even more, stringent on all these things that you has to be done before you can even get to the building if there is a building to get to so we, we look at all that people have power and sometimes this power isn't utilized in the best way yeah we call that hierarchy and things like that you know imperialism and who, who you know all kinds of tyrannies and whatnot so how does that play out so there's confusion on a lot of our part coming from that two-way value system when we're looking at this and finding out what where's my learned behavior come from so we got the modernization which also contributes to colonization so i i don't want to get into this too much but uh my peer mentioned that one of the other guys will mention this and that was with the 215 children they just found so we go back to the trail of tears when they go back to uh, the residential schools and all these other things that we have in our history to, to look at this. And it's like, just assimilate already, man, let all that old stuff go and get modernized, you know, and uh, being a recovering addict myself, I'm not good with lines that uh, went to jail and got arrested. And, but we look at this world, you know, a lot of people ain't good with lines. 
You get stuck behind a school bus early in the morning when you're trying to get to work. We get upset when we're way back, huh? When we're in the DMV waiting to go up to the window and we're in the bank waiting to go up to the window. When we're at Walmart and there's only one lane open and there's 15 people waiting. When we're way at that back, we got something to say, yeah? When we're next, uh, we get pretty excited that we're next and we made it and feel that gratitude and stuff. Huh? That bus pulls over, lets us go by. That's awesome too. You know, we get those little things, but we hate those lines. Here, here where I'm at is customs too. Traveling through customs so much and watching those lines, man. Getting mad, how come they don't open another lane and why the hell this and why the hell that? And boy, it sets an intent for the rest of the day sometimes if we get too upset, huh? Holistic thinking. That's the circularity, the entirety. And I look at that from one day at a time. From the starting point, we leave our nest, go on a journey, learn a lesson, and we have the return. And if everybody ever watched Finding Joe, you see that, just like that hero's journey. We go through that. I think there's initiation is one that's on there, and there's like 14 or 16 of them actually in the hero's journey. But when we look at it holistically, uh, from uh, even from the medicine wheel, which I think might be even the next one. But looking at that circle too, we look at Mother Earth again. There's the south west, north, east, so that direction, so that creates the whole Thanksgiving address again when it starts from just that, and it shows the waters and the lands and everything in its entirety all the way up to the sky world. We look at it from the medicine wheel, the emotional, the mental, the physical, the spiritual. There's so much inclusion in the medicine wheel and there's so many teachings in there. So, uh, go ahead, Javi. We get really trying to figure it out What's what? Which which is which? I like to say which which is which. You know the English language is so perplexed. There's so many things that means the same thing. In uh, looking at it from a, a simplicity standpoint, it's like, what do you mean? You know, what do you mean? How come you just can't say it's a nice day? What does that mean? You know, trying to decipher those interests. I can't say it. Intricacies. And trying to play it in the mind and like overthink it, overanalyze it and things like that instead of sit there and bask in it, you know. So especially now, like I say, lawyers, you know, they got what, uh, what does that mean when he said that? Or, and they tear it apart and we create this whole language thing that's just so, when we have our language, it's pictorial. So it, it expresses that. It's not about spelling and using the right which and the right for and the right this or that. It's all about just how you feel. If you're happy, good. If you're pissed, good. At least you know there's so many people walking around this world pissed that don't even realize it. Huh? Sometimes it comes out in road rage. And sometimes it comes out in drive-by shootings and all kinds of craziness. Then again, coming back closer to home, the domestic violence, the sexual assault, you know, all these other things that happen. So we have to look at this. Huh? We have to look at it. And when we look at it in this medicine wheel right here, you see, like, I don't know how to show it to. I'm looking directly at it. So the red would be east. That's the beginning. So when I was talking about that, I don't know if I can. Javi. Can I get this on there? Yeah, give me it. So this is this is off. This is off. So how am I gonna do it? This is we're just using that one. So if we need to go closer, uh, let me see. I don't know. No, it's not gonna work like that. Okay, but that's there, there's some writings. I'll, I'll read it. To the, they're in the east. We have the infant, which is springtime, which represents the earth, the cedar. Wolf, trust, 6 a.m. And the question from the infancy is always why. Why am I? Why am I? Why, right? You ask little kids to do anything. They say, why, why, why? So when we look at that, when we look at that, really, really close. I can't. 
can't change one because I'm on the share screen. Okay. Okay. Uh, that that'll be that'll be for when we get to it then I guess. So, but to understand that question, even why is the world like this? Why are there so many addicts? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? So we're looking at that even from being here in this webinar as to why do we need this? So if we're looking at it from that growth, that infancy stage, we start to answer those questions of why. So from an indigenous standpoint, looking at why is 98% of this reservation here affected with drugs and alcohol, domestic violence, sexual assault, when has that become the norm? Why has it become the norm? So we have to look at these things and uh, try to figure this out as to what we can do. So looking at and studying certain things and uh, looking at, like say through the sweat lodge, through ceremony and all these things and uh, uh, translating, translating many of the conventional AA and A stuff into something. So putting it on this medicine wheel, we'd go to the yellow, that'd be the teenager. The black would be the adult, the white would be the elder. So we got the question, why am I as the infant? The teen, the question is who? They're all it, right? Who, 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 right? We say somebody's got to take the garbage out. The teenager goes, who? Who's got to take that garbage out? Who? So we look at that from that teenage eyes. The adult is when are you going to take that garbage out? When? Actually, I made a mistake with that. It's where. Where are you going? Where are you guys going? Where? Where are you going? The, the elder is what, when. With the spiritual, we wanna, when we're going to know something. When we quiet down enough and understand this enough, we'll, we'll know. Even knowing that we don't know is a good thing. Because a lot of times, back to the teenager, we'll explain it. Even though he doesn't know what it is, he will explain it. Because we think that that generation at that time, they're very adamant about what they know. But from an outer standpoint, they haven't seen what we've seen to understand the full capacity of the pain of that in its making if they continue the road they're on. So trying to get them to see that confusion and conflicting within oneself as to if you continue this with self, you're going to end up in different places where they're not always pretty. You're going to end up in relationship with this domestic violence and things. So we got to know, know what those red flags are. So to identify those things, huh? Because that infant is trust. His gift is trust. The teenager is excitement. The elder is acknowledgement. How far that would go if we say, say to people often, Good job. I appreciate what you did. So he said, what the hell did you do that for? Gee, some crow, what's wrong with you? Man, you don't listen. What can't, you know? We, we look down on, heart down, put down, how that. So we create this insecurity and stuff. So how do we act up and act out when we're at a certain age, you know? And we go back to that. A lot of that comes from that learned behavior. A lot of it came from the boarding schools and stuff that was handed down. There was no truths in there to build on, there was only trauma. So we're starting to get these back now to this acknowledgement. Like I mentioned the 215 children. I said, my one buddy over there has got his own shirt on and that's, that represents that life lost at such a young age and to acknowledge that. We can't let that be in vain, huh? So we start learning things. Go ahead, John. So how do we do it? There's the sweat lodge. Every one of those rhombuses, triangles, rectangles, all that, every one of those have a teaching in there. Every line in there, there has a teaching in there as to the sweat lodge and to break that down. The breaking down of every one of these in that instance is basically the same as the medicine wheel. It solidifies it. It validates it. So when you hear it once in the medicine wheel, then you hear it in the... Sweat Lodge teachings, then you hear it again, it starts to become normal size in our minds. 
we start to hear that language, we start to understand that language. So we start to speak, we start to change and speak different. So we start to see that truth and we're able to say that. And, you know, how are you doing? Ah, not so good. Oh, okay, what's up? Sit down, let's talk, you know? Instead, we learn how to lie, right? How's it going? Good, good. You just had the worst day of your life, but you're telling the next person, good, no, it's all good. Why do we lie like that? You know, can't go around calling everybody a liar. That's not good either. <laughs> but why, you know, how come we just can't say, geez, I'm having a bad morning. Oh, you never see it. You know, I got road rage. The son of a gun cut me off, this and that, see? But if we acknowledge that and be okay with that in a healthy way, then we start to understand it and make it okay because, you know, that I'll give you something to cry about. That, that's not the best way. Huh? Act your age, not the best way. Huh? What do you know? Again, put down. It's not the best way we get from that. Then we don't try anymore because we don't want to get put down. So why try? Go ahead, John. So this is one of the mind maps. If anybody's ever uh, did this before, uh, this this is where I want to go to the next level. This takes it to the next level, just like that. Uh, the medicine wheel on the east side is the emotional. And uh, usually I'll do two of these. One is pragmatic and one is solutional. So we start off with pragmatic and we put on the inside. So we are going to be doing this, and I am going to be uh, requesting answers and uh, to interact in things and uh, to find out why. So that emotional side, why am I like this? So if I look at that, if I put domestic violence inside the middle of that circle, so I'm, I'm going to say this. So when we do this and uh, you're on here again, try to remember a couple of these words. So you, you, you'll shine when we actually partake. So if I put domestic violence, sexual assault in the middle and go to the, what I'm going to call the east side, which is emotional. It's like, what happens that makes us that emotional? So anger is a big one, right? And usually we get angry because something triggers a memory. So in my memory is all these negative events that took place in my life. So when I see it or hear, smell, anything triggers that old memory. So I might even be in a new relationship but those old memories are hold me back because they were ugly. See? So I get angry because of the trigger. It's not even the person I'm talking to spout because they don't know what something they say, an action they do triggers that memory. Then I go into the defensive mode, right? So I get insecure because of uh, unknown. Then I get delusional because I start projecting thoughts into a time that don't exist thinking that this person is no better than everybody else because of an action. So how do I identify that, see? So looking at the mental, you can see the emotional way up on the left-hand side on my screen is reaction. That's what emotion is, is a reaction to an event. Somebody scares me and I jump. I didn't mean to. Last thing I wanted to do was jump, but I did. Sometimes I make weird noises too when I get scared. Huh? I go, ah! And that always makes people laugh too because, but yeah, that, that was my integrity. So I go back to the spiritual, which is straight up in the outcome of thing. My ego got bruised. So I want to make a plan. I go back to the mental and I want to seek revenge. I call it tapping back, right? Somebody says something, I got to tap back. You know, so that turns into Hatfields and McCoys, huh? Them tap backs. So the physical aspect of it is never healthy irresponsible things like that so I, I start identifying all that stuff but when i see it like this i got one here that i've been working with a client on uh something in uh i might get to show that another day like when we get into it just to show you that the work we do is to go in and where does it come from where does it come from to start to identify because it does go back to childhood it does go back to that learned behavior and those traumas and I always tell everybody, emotional trauma, it, it's the most underdiagnosed and hardest to prove. Physical trauma is the easiest to prove. You can say, look at my eye. Look at my arm. Look at this bruise. Eh? We can prove physical trauma easy, abuse easy. It's hard. Even mental abuse, people start questioning that, right? 
well, yesterday you said this, now you're saying this. Why did it change a little bit? And that's going back to that, like the language, how pertinent is that language? You know, of course it changes a little bit. The day changed a little bit. My truth today ain't going to be the same truth tomorrow because I'm going to have different ideals in my head. I'm going to have different feelings in my, my body, you know? So I go according to. If I'm happy, go lucky. My explanations are very exciting and everything. If I'm down and out, boy, it's not so fun to be around me, you know? But that's a, and there's a solution of one. So I go through clients with this for a job. We get into the creation story. Uh, I, I'd like to really get into this more uh, today in itself, and uh, we still might have time. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see how it goes. A lot of times I let my uh, coworker, Kaladol, don't do the creation story, and then I'll do a quick drawing. I, I'd like to draw stick people, but I have a, I have a, I don't know how to say it. Like a, I, I'll do the this one, and then I'll do Catholicisms and see the differences and the similarities and stuff. And it makes it a more acceptable in my own mind and a lot of people to say, oh, okay, because this, uh, you're just going to hell for whatever reason. I want to know, <laughs> well, why, why is that one the one, you know? Well, where did this come from and things like that? So there's some explanation to that, whether it's valid, what I'm saying. I believe it and I, the thought of it is what helps. Just like a negative uh, Negative person walks in the room, we feel it, we know. If it's mom or dad or somebody, right, we say that, right? oh, be careful, mom's pissed. Watch what you say, you know, you don't want to suffer the wrath. <laughs> so how do, how do we do that, you know? As siblings, we don't know better than that, right? Hey, your brother's pissed, all right, we go right in there and get right in their face, huh? Ah, what's wrong with you? How come you're pissed? Then we get smacked and go car back to mom. Who was the bad guy in that, huh? That's a... Tough call right there. Go ahead, Javi. There's a handsome lake where uh, he he was born and came a little later. Or is that the peacemaker? Which one is that, Javi? Okay, that's the peacemaker then. My bad. I jumped ahead. The peacemaker came and he was the one that started to understand th this... Uh, system we were living in it wasn't right and how to get back to what we call our original instructions how to conduct ourselves in a good way so when i look at that from a traditional standpoint and we bring this forward again that to hear his story and how he conducted it like right there it's a stone canoe so when the guys first seen him come to shore they were amazed because how could this man be in a stone canoe and be paddling in the water. So there's a whole story to this. There's a whole thing to this. And again, if we get the opportunity, we, we will speak on it again. But like in the beginning, I thought it's a 40 hour, 60 hour class just in myself of teaching. That's not to count the other things we do in between that, that can take it to 80 hours. So fortunately we only have uh, another say half hour or so to go. So I'm not going to be able to squeeze all that in for sure. But this, I'm just trying to introduce what we do here as men to present it to the younger men and uh, youth and certain people. Go ahead. This is what we call our Guyana Let Go. This is the great law. And the, these were the chiefs, every length of wampum. That's the chief. There's 50 wampums there all the way around, strands of wampum. And that's what created our confederacy. They all had to agree. And if you can look and see on the sides, it's an interwoven double strand of wampum. It's interwoven. So that's, uh, we go back in history and look at the Constitution of the United States. And a lot of uh, uh, the historians tell us that the, the, the Constitution came from our confederacy, but there was a few things in there that they didn't care for, and that was one of them. That interwoven strand that went on the outside, huh? I believe, I, I, don't quote me, but I believe back in Ben Franklin days, when they came and uh, met with our leadership, 
that when they went back to discuss what was discussed, uh, one of the one of the uh, conversations went something like this: Do you believe that their leadership actually listens to the people? That this is dangerous. They let the cheap the people decide, then they tell the leadership, then the leadership brings it to the table and to let it be like that. So what we have today is leadership getting voted in and making decisions and then giving it back to us to say, okay, we pass a law from now on, you can't do this. Or we pass a law that says from now on, you can do this. Well, where, where was my input? Oh, well, you voted us in, so we're acting on your behalf. See, our leadership, they did the, what do you call that vote? Referendum. They had to do the referendum first. Then the referendum would be taken to the leadership. Then the leadership would just announce it. The leadership didn't decide what it was. They just announced what it was. So if there was a referendum that says no more of this, that's what the chiefs did. So they weren't the lawmakers. They were just the curators like, huh? So, but on that outside, that was the politic and the religion together. So that meant leadership had to do what they said. They were responsible for the word. So when we look at Congress and that, they separated the church from the state. See? They separated because they didn't want that responsibility of having to own what they said. I get, to me, to make it long story short, is that they could lie and it was okay, but they had to go and repent for that lie to fix it. So I think the adage, it's better to ask for forgiveness than it is permission. So that kind of thing comes out where our leadership, they had to be good people, virtuous men, in order to sit in that position to follow through. So that was something that was, that longest strand was a gentleman that we call, he wasn't a gentleman actually. He was, he, he was a feisty, miserable son of a gun. Uh, his name was Tarot Daho. And they said he had snakes coming out of his hair and he had crooks in his body and just a miserable, magical sort of person. And uh, they had to bring this great law to him. And they said it was to comb the snakes out of his hair. And that was to, uh, we call them issues today. Huh? So when, say, Ron uh, come into the PH, that's how he came in. A uh, miserable human being with crooks in his body and snakes in his hair. So we come those snakes out of his hair. They're called issues. Huh? So whether that was abuse, traumas, and all that stuff, we start identifying them, start working on them, start get rid of them so he could dispense of that stuff. So we could have that go into a sweat lodge and come out reborn with a new being, new character, new everything to start our life over again. So go ahead. <laughs> so a lot of our teachings, right? The way they were doing things, the, this guy is burning tobacco. So when we gave our thanks, that's what we would do. We would have that fire and put the tobacco in there and send our prayers up. And that, that's how we would uh, communicate. So, I know he's Mohawk too because there's three feathers on his costoa in the background. Go ahead. There's the two row wampum. That's uh, that's our original wampum in uh, This here's. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot I'm on the other thing. I'm putting it in front of the computer trying to see me. I'm on the webcam. So that's the same thing. This is this is a real replica of that same belt. That's the two row wampum. That was the agreement made with the Europeans with you guys stay in your ship, we'll stay in our canoe. And as long as we do that, we're not supposed to cross and interweave. 
into each other's business. So that was the agreement that was made. And then the, after that, there was a lot more wampums and stuff, which I have a bag full of it. So each one marked, marked the happening. Go ahead, Javi. This is some of the movies I mentioned Finding Joe already. Uh, it took me almost two years to watch that movie when somebody handed it to me and said, watch this, this is a good movie. And I looked at it and I'm like, yeah, it doesn't look that good. <laughs> so I really learned that don't judge a book by its cover because when I watched it, I thought it was one of the greatest movies I ever saw because it really brings in the simplicities and the complexities of my thought process. So then I go above that a little bit, the Thunderheart, which is a nice, simple movie, but it's, it's, I utilize it. It's awesome. It's that uh, the unknown, like being indigenous and not knowing where my heritage or anything, that was Val Kilmore and he, he got to the res. Then looking at uh, the dominant society, the thought process of them, how uh, they put it on, like they're saying the, the stigma of them. Well, I don't think, they're going to make you weave baskets or make it rain or something so that, you know, a lot of the people, that was our only way of uh, finance was to make the baskets. And up here in Agwazasne, we have baskets in many, many museums of some of the most beautiful basketry made and stuff. So it was really a pride thing, but it was looked at as uh, mere nothingness. Huh? And the same thing with that peaceful warrior over in the left. I watched that movie, and again, because it was gymnastics, I, I can probably roll over and play dead. I can't, I can't do much else. Uh, I mean, I, I actually, I played hockey and stuff, and I play volleyball and stuff like that. So, but I did watch it, and it's kind of a karate kid movie. But boy, oh boy, there was some good stuff in there, really good stuff that I related to in, in this journey. Well, Bridey down on the bottom is a book, and uh, that that. Uh, the thing with that book, it was, the, if I remember right, is uh, they took the AA and the NA and put it together and put an indigenous spin on it. But because it had mixed those two, they, they didn't accept it. So they called it well variety instead. So there's a lot of good stuff in there. And especially from an indigenous standpoint, I know when I first came into this program, I was uh, very uh, defiant and rebellious and especially seeing that weird God in uh, the early writings, I really, uh, uh, I wrote, my first paper was a page and a half on how God was an ass and uh, hated me and my family and all this stuff. And I, I really thought that that was gonna be, uh, I actually thought I was gonna get kicked out of the rehab for that. And uh, the guy just said, you're gonna have a problem with me because I'm not a native. And I said, no, I'm gonna use you for everything I can. And he said, all right, cool. And I said, oh, wait, it kind of threw me off because he didn't get pissed. He didn't throw me off and all this stuff. So we, we looked into it and it went back to he created, he addressed it as one of the had. And uh, when we got into it, looking at it, and it went back to that, he didn't answer all my prayers. When I said, God, get me out of this one, I swear I'll do better. He didn't answer that. <laughs> he let me fall by the wayside a few times, uh, maybe to learn some hard lessons, but I didn't learn them. So it took me a while. So I understand that after a while. Traditional teachings is one of the easiest books we have uh, for sim the simplicity of it. The guy in the picture is holding a condolence cane. I have one of those too. There's that same thing as that circular, uh, the, the great law. That, that's the same thing. The pegs uh, were the chiefs. That was the head, the ego. It was a staff and a, uh, they would recite that every time they had a meeting, they would get together and they'd go through the roll call. It was called like, just like Congress again, they would hold that stick up and whoever was there sitting to represent that person of the name on that peg was there. And uh, a, a lot of these places too that are in there like that, the peacemaker, when he was in that canoe, me and my friend here, we went to that place, to that falls where his, his big uh, event took place. So we stood there, we sang some songs, put some tobacco down and made acknowledgement of that. Then there was a female that was brought in, Jagunsaze, and uh, she was up in uh, uh, 
let's see, what's, what was that little town where, uh, where that was? It's outside of Tuscarora, yeah. No, it's outside of Tuscarora, it's a small town, it was like Loft or something, it was a simple word, uh, well, geez, I got it in my uh, thing, but it was a little town there, and this is where this woman was, and the, there was a big story about how she met the peacemaker, and the peacemaker persuaded her to quit this uh, stuff she was doing. She was a real instigator, huh? and she would like to entice men. She would like to entice men into her uh, little hut there and stuff, and she would seduce them, poison them, different things, and she would like to instigate too, and she would say, "Hey, this guy's over here. Say, you guys are no good, and get them fighting." And then she would take everything she could from them and stuff. But when the peacemaker showed up, he changed her mind on all this stuff. And uh, she realized he had some power. So she, he brought that to peace, back to that coming the issues, coming the snakes, got her to agree to follow his way and uh, spread that message. So she didn't allow any fighting in her village anymore after she met the peacemaker. So it changed uh, some stuff. Huh? So that's another big story in there. Well, we went there too. And uh, we sang some songs, put some tobacco down, and it was a really uh, humbling experience to stand on those places that our, our history is written from, huh? And uh, we're part of that, so. And I, I like to watch History Channel too, so like when they mention different places that maybe Jesus had walked and stuff, I like seeing that because it gives credence to that word, huh? And uh, different things like that, I, I watch a lot of that stuff too, just to really acknowledge, you know, instead of it just being a story, you know, I like to see that history and stuff, so brings it to life, huh? So, go ahead, Jabba. We used the, uh, we'd make drums, we used the drums, we got hand drums, we practiced songs, we, we get that out, just like we sang earlier. Uh, again, like I said, we might have an opportunity to do a couple women's verses here in a minute. And it's just the idea of getting that heartbeat. They say that Mother Earth, she has a heartbeat. And we have that same heartbeat. So when we hit our drum, we hit the drum with that heartbeat. So it becomes one, all connected to our feet. The woman shuffle danced when that uh, sky woman came down and shuffled her feet to make that earth grow. That's what that dance is about. And her feet never left the ground, so on our women dance, that's how they shuffle their feet to show that. Then there's all kinds of verses to that. Then there's another set of verses to another ceremony they do. And that has to do with all the planting. It's a seed ceremony and they sing like 90 verses in that too. And it's all very loving, nurturing songs and stuff that they utilize. So that drama is really important. And the circularity shows the entirety, the holisms. Then the hide that's on there represents the animal life. And uh, us, we have the water drum. So we got the water life in there. We got the plant life in there, the tree life's in there. And all that stuff is all in there, again, to help us to have that song. Huh? Go ahead, John. Rattle making we do. We use the horn. Sometimes we got buffalo horns, cow horns, steer horns, whatever we can. We have classes. We have uh, father and sons come in. But again, we, we do have some daughters that come in. We're kind of earmarked for male side, but we really have a hard time to say, <laughs> you can't come. We, we, we try to do the best we can with, I guess, earmarking the funding to what it's at. But if we're not gonna get our 10 to 15 registrants, we open it up and make sure that it's okay. Um, good. <laughs> there's a good memory right there the picture makes it squashed but that's uh myself and my nephew cohen that's uh got dodo's boy and he's been coming and hitting on that drum and learning and he takes over sometimes he lays right on that drum and doesn't let us play and he'll get in front of you and stuff and he's a lot older now and stuff so i haven't seen him and we haven't sang in over a year because of this uh covid stuff but he was right in there. Go ahead. Uh, ceremonies taking place. That's like basically our longhouse and stuff. The talking and I can see, but the Gustavus, the people that are there, the nations that are there and 
conversing and sharing and that, that's some other thing. The meeting before the meeting, we always like to say the meeting before the meeting. So when we do men's talking circle, we have that meeting first. So it makes it hard. We want to say we're going to start at six o'clock and be out by seven, but we actually get started at 6.30 and not out till 8.30 and stuff like that because, you know, we talk and share and it's the place that we miss the most is that fire to sit around that fire and share that experience, strengths and hopes and uh, get those ideals and get those thoughts and everything, even if it's negative, to get that off our chest and share that and have that empathy and have that to, to move on, you know, to get through this stuff. And we did that earlier today. We were sitting around the table laughing and talking about real life stuff and then hacking on each other and getting serious. And it just feels good to, to even be in the same room right now. It's just an awesome feeling to, to know. I miss these guys, you know. So, next one. The talking circles, of course, we're going to experience one of those coming up in the, whenever it is on the schedule. So that, that's like I said, we get into that and we, we go around, everybody has that feather and shares and things out. So they're different because we're not, uh, it's not like a group session where you get to challenge or say things and you just have your opportunity to speak. And when you're holding that sacred feather too, usually we talk the truth. We tell on ourselves about things that happen in our life, especially when somebody else opens up. We go, holy man, I'm glad I'm not that bad. <laughs> but there's gratitude. Huh? And then we start to understand in that circle, no matter what, there's always somebody behind me, always somebody in front of me. So it all depends how, where we are, you know. If I'm angry, there's always someone not as angry as me and somebody more angry than me. So same thing with anything. Somebody more emotional than me, not as emotional than me. Have more money than me, not as much money as me, you know. All that. Got up earlier than me, got up later than me, you know. All these things, that, just to understand, we're in the line with the moderniz modernization in that line. It's way up there or way back here. See? And it puts that persona on us. Just like a square table at supper time. Who sits at the head of the table? Who sits on the side of the table? How come you get to sit on that side? See, it creates. If it was a circular table, there's no end. There's no beginning. You just are. So that took away a lot of the animosities and stuff. So even looking at that, as simple as that, goes back to the hierarchy and the holistic. Okay? Square table versus a round table. Wow. Imagine that. You know, that something simple affects because of our thought process and our learned behavior process. Okay. So, of course, we've got the self-help, the A's and A's and different CODAs and CAs and different stuff that happen with the, the readings, homeworks and stuff. And right. One-on-ones. I got, man, my, my schedule has been pretty busy the last couple of months with one-on-ones. And I got stuff all over in here on the walls and panels and pages and flipping through them and stuff and just trying to see, meet people where they're at give them an idea of what's happening and uh, where to start. And when they walk out, it's back to that safe place, safe space to be able to say what we got to say. Even if it's complaining and bitching at first, you know, got to empty out that animosity emotion, got to get the emotion up to make a new plan, got to make a new plan, huh? So, almost there, go ahead. Okay. So that's a lot of things that we go through here uh, in, a, in a, a scheduled uh, sequence as far as that goes. Uh, so like I said, it takes sometimes. Sometimes I do two hour sessions with somebody and uh, say they're going, they got to go to court. So they want to get as much time in. Unfortunately, that's, that's a, a lot like that because of that. But, uh, you know, we're right here. I take walk-ins. I do different things. And we have that also. So it's, uh, I, I, it's, I like it. It's enjoyable. Uh, that's that's what I'm going to share for now. I'm going to give the back over to my coworker Galadodo. Let him share a little more. Then, if there's any questions or anything, just uh, put them in the chat or let me know. Thank you, Harvey. Say hello, everybody. I just want to remove this to introduce myself to you and. Um, uh, see our, our faces together. 
Um, I do the youth program here at Seven Dancers Coalition, um, Saplings to Cedar, and what what um, the beginning of that was that I was helping Harvey with working with the men, and uh, I was seeing that like we're all going through the same things in our our upbringing and um, our environments here. And we're, we're mostly all ending up in the same places, you know, institutions. And I wanted to try and come up with a way for the youth that they don't end up where we ended up. You know, my, I always tell Harvey, my goal, my goal is that these young ones never have to come to see you in the program. They can see us in a good way out, out and about in the community doing ceremony, helping out with community, with elders, um, but they won't have to come to the Stand in the Trees Back Up men's program because, because their lives will be okay. So um, <clears throat> a, lot of the, a lot of the programming that um, I incorporate for the youth is based on myself and my life uh, when I grew up. What was lacking? in my life, the culture wasn't, wasn't being presented. It was, it was still illegal to practice our culture at that time. In 1978 is when it finally became legal to practice our own culture. So I was already 11 years old at that time. And to me, uh, my survival right now is based on the fact that some of my people continued the culture in secret and were able to continue to pass that on to us. So I give everything to my elders in that way. What I try and do with the youth is uh, like when I was in uh, school, they brought in, I think it must have been in 1978 because it was the only time I, I remember them bringing our own singers in to the gym and we all circled around them and they sang, sang songs for us and we, we all danced. And the amazing thing was even though it was, even though I wasn't exposed to it as much as I should have been, my own culture, once I heard them singing that, them songs, playing that drum, dancing in our way, in our cultural way, I felt uh, alive. I felt like a human being. I felt like that big giant piece of me that was missing was now able to be filled with that. And I never forgot that. I never forgot the feeling of being whole just by listening to, to uh, our singers and watching us all dance together. You know, like what Harvey said about the Honda Galiwadekwa, the, the opening address. It brings us all together in our minds. It brings us all together. Like right now, each one of us are all one mind. And we put all that together and everybody's, everybody's energy comes together and it magnifies. And it just shoots right out to wherever, wherever my intention, my attention is at, that's where it'll shoot to. Wherever yours is, that's where it'll go to. So when I seen all of my little relatives, my age, my size, all start singing and dancing and like expressing joy, not, not with their voice or their whatever, but just their, their being expressed joy and freedom. And I never forgot that, never forgot that feeling. And I, was, I also never forgot how ashamed I was of myself for wanting to do that. I could sing and dance on my own when nobody's watching. But the moment another human being was within earshot of me or, or they could see me, I wasn't able to sing anymore and I wasn't able to dance and I wasn't able to speak our language anymore. I felt that incredible shame and that shame dictated the direction of my life. 
until I met Harvey. I put the bottle down a long time ago and uh, he's always been there. You know, he's my, uh, more like my, he's not quite old enough to be my uncle, but he's more like an older brother to me. And uh, the, the, the rock, you know, he's, he's, he's there and I can count on him. That's what, that's what I need to be able to see in my relatives. You know, I can count on him. And that, that's what I try and share with these youth. Um, so everything that I've, I've lived through, where I've been lacking, well, not, not I've been lacking, but what the, the world has not allowed, I guess, or it's made it difficult for me to have my own culture, my own language, you know? Everything that I've, I've uh, not been given the way it's supposed to be given by our, our elders and our parents, I try and give that back to the children, the youth. Because to this day, it's still going on. We're still, we're still uh, punishing our own people. You know, uh, to me, I think that the outside agencies and entities have stopped punishing our people to somewhat. And we have taken it upon ourselves to continue to punish our own people by judging them or blaming them or wondering why they can't get a job. And I, I wonder why they don't put that drink down. Like, why don't they take, you know, I'm, I'm judging them and I'm, I'm, I'm not helping them. I'm pushing them down, contributing to the problem. You know, so I try and just share that non-judgmental. Who am I to judge anybody or anything? I'm equal with every life on this planet. I'm not better than anybody else. I'm not worse than anybody else. I'm equal. So many of our youth, they, they don't realize that, that we're equals. And the youth are even, in our culture, the youth are pure. So they're held up higher than we are. That's why it's our job to protect them. They're our future. You know, I think about it sometimes like my life, the way it used to be and what I would have been remembered for and the way my life is now and what I may be remembered for. You know, I think about that, you know. What do I want? I want to be remembered by my people in a good way. I want to be remembered by them kids in a good way, you know. My children living a good life because of, because of the direction I took. That's what I want to share with the youth. And the one thing that I uh, really, that really, um, breaks that shell off of shame is the voice. I had no voice. I wasn't able to speak. I wasn't able to express myself. So I started singing and I just started singing on my own in, in silence, in private, where nobody can hear me ever. And I just started singing and it became more comfortable because I felt so good inside that eventually this feeling of, of being uh, loved by myself was more powerful than being hated from the world. And that was a change in me. And that was a moment of, uh, of where my voice came out. And the only way my voice will stop from now on is if there's no breath left in me. And that's good. You know, that'll be a good, like Harvey said, that would be a good day to die right there. <laughs> but I ain't ready yet. We got a long way to go. I got a newborn, newborn baby girl. Um, we have 10 year old, we got 10 year old twin boys. I have, I have older children, they're grown. Everything happened. Uh, they live good lives. I have grandchildren, and then, uh, well, I, I had a new family. You know, my 
my wife, my first wife left me and uh, she passed away. And uh, because of my drinking and my, uh, my abusive uh, anger. Um, and then all of that, I had to learn from it. And I, and I made a decision that um, I'm not gonna touch that stuff anymore. And I cre my, my the, the universe brought me together with my partner now. And we have uh, 10 year old twin boys. We have a two and a half year old son and we have a baby daughter. She's almost three months now. And I don't, I don't uh, want them to experience what I've gone through. They may because they live here, but I'm going to do everything I can to keep them from uh, going through those painful experiences. I'm going to let them live their own life and let them experience them, them uh, scraped knees and all that stuff that they need to go through. But I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that they don't have to suffer like, like pretty much all of us do here. And uh, I seen um, there was a, somebody passed away or something and, and they were young. They were in their late twenties, you know? And I remember when I was in my late twenties, I didn't think I would survive. And when I, when I was in my thirties, I didn't think I would survive. So I never planned on the future because there is no future. If I don't think I'm gonna survive this stuff, there is no future. You know, so I wanna give children hope for the future. Hope for their grandchildren, their children, their grandchildren, their great grandchildren. I'm gonna be a great grandfather. I'm gonna say in about four or five years, I have a, a granddaughter and she's, she's growing, she's like, 12, 12 in that age, you know, and she's like just as tall as her mom, my daughter, you know, they're, they're, they're growing up and I'm gonna be a great grandfather. That's a big responsibility. Uh, I, 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 I keep that in mind now, you know. And Harvey, I think he's, he's doing something over there with, with that hook, you know, when you... <laughs> He takes me over here and pulls me. <laughs> um, I just want to leave with you one thing. Uh, what I've been what I've been sharing is that in this time, is that to really hug, really appreciate, really show your affection, voice those good words to to your children. You know, appreciate that. Have big gratitude to them. Big kids too, like Harvey, he can he can get that too. <laughs> but live live in this moment and and just love. Danito, you go. Thank you so much, Pray. Any 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 questions? Nothing yet. I put it on the chat. So we have one question. When do you all do the talking circles? You want me to do this one or are you? Okay. So to answer E's question on the talking circles, um, for myself, I get to host one on Monday night from uh, 7 to 8. It's called Uplifting the Spirit. Um, when that originally started, um, Prey and Amy were discussing something about having a grief talking circle and, um, a few places got mad at the name of it. So we changed the name and we've had no complaints with uplifting the spirit and that's where it's at. And it's just, it's really good. It's open to everybody. Um, young, old. Uh, male, female, it's open to anybody. Uh, 
Wednesday nights um, is our men's talking circle, which Harvey hosts, but um, we're all a part of. Um, that's from 6 to 8 p.m. That time frame has changed from its original, which was 7 to 9. And Harvey likes to buy pizza. Um, when when I got hired myself, I, I, I would like to chip in with him and buy pizzas. And every now and then we get some from Cornwall. And if anybody's ever had Cornwall pizza, it's just the best. Harvey's going to tell me it sucks, but it doesn't. It's the best pizza in the world. Um, if you guys ever do get a chance to come back and see us here, please let us know, and I'll make sure it happens that we go get you guys Canadian pizza. Amazing. What is your favorite pizza top? And mine, personally? I, I already know where these guys went. I already know. <laughs> I'm just a pepperoni and cheese guy. Simple. Keep it real simple. But on the Canadian side, theirs isn't pepperoni. It's more like the, like a Canadian salami. There's mushrooms, green peppers, and that, and, and lots of cheese. It's really good. Is there also somewhere? I lost it. We can find the info about the talking circles or how could someone join? Okay, so... That goes back to the Seven Dancers Coalition uh, Facebook page. If you do go on there, there are links um, to email myself for for those links. Um, so yesterday we did the Wednesday night one in person, but also did hybrid. Um, Prey was the only one that was on from Zoom, but it went really well. Um, so that's that's where that's at right now. Um, I don't know if it is on our website or not, um, but I also post it through my own personal Facebook of when things are going on. Uh, Ace and E just shared the Seven Dance Coalition page. Awesome. Thanks, E. Um, anything else? Yeah, there is. Oh, there is a women's domestic violence one too on Wednesdays, and I believe they just moved theirs from five to six or five to seven. I'm not positive, but yeah, I can get that link posted onto the Seven Dances page too. So that's a uh, women's circle, women's talking circle. Yeah. Have, have y'all resumed your um, sweat lodges? Or are you waiting until um, a little later for folks to feel safe for that? <clears throat> so for right now, um, I we did put it up and I believe it's the four of us that are gonna go in for the first one and then we'll do the one for the solstice. And then I don't know exactly what we're going to do for other community members just yet because I know it's hard to say, okay, if you have both your shots, okay, come in. But then it's like we feel bad because we can't say no to anybody. So we're kind of kind of stuck right now. But I know for the first couple of them, I'm going in. And then after that, if I have to fire keep, then I want to make space for, for others to go in. So, but that's where, that's where the sweat lodge is at right now. Um, it's good to see things opening up again. And yes, I was just sharing today with one of our member programs about the cultural safety program um, training we attended with y'all a couple of years ago. And I told them to like, look forward to maybe next year coming up there sometime if you, if you all are able to offer those up again. So with our, um, compliance office i was waiting for them to come here and do the measurements to give us the seating capacity and i i kind of did it on my own and i could fit 17 people up front but uh, we just got word from the carpenters that they might be coming back to do some work to make the front office bigger so then that would make it bigger to put some more people in and so hopefully sooner than uh sooner than next year that we could start doing the cultural safety. Thank you. 
Does anyone else have any questions to either verbalize or put in the chat? Don't be shy, because I used to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank you, Ron. Thank you, Prey. Thank you, Harvey. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Amy. All of you who are there. I, I think I missed someone, um, the new fellow who's Harvey's assistant. I'm sorry I didn't catch your name fully. It's Dawi, but you can call him David. <laughs> Dolly. And we, we are going to do one more song. Beautiful. So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what is this? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So that, if we had uh, some of our women up front, we could have had them come back and show the shuffle. So it's hard for us guys because we're not as coordinated as women. And, uh, we, we trip and fall down a lot when we try to do that. But that, that was for the women, the women's dance itself and quick creation story. When that woman did that, she shared those songs and she was planting seeds. She was sharing these songs and them songs are still sung to this day from the beginning of time. Like, so it's really an honor for us to sing in honor of all the females across Turtle Island in this way with these songs. Huh? So that, that goes out to all of you. So, yeah. Oh, I see a one in the chat. Let me see if I can figure this out. I'm not the tech guy, so. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> thank you all so much. Uh, voicing, yeah. it, voicing for all of us here in Zoom land. <laughs> we'll get out so more in depth as we go too, because again, that was only introductory. So these things that we're doing was <laughs> just to introduce <laughs> what, what goes on here. You know, so it's not even broken down yet. That's just the surface, right? So yeah, that's forward. a good overview. I always got to steal the spotlight from Harvey every <laughs> now and then. That was a really great overview of so many of the things, though, and so much that you have to offer. And we look forward to working with you all again very soon for the next uh, the next event coming up, which I know we have a we have some communications to work out on some of the details. But for right now, we're just going to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, uh, no. Yeah, yeah. We say onagi. Wah. See ya later. Ciao for now. There you go. <laughs> Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for all your tech support. Thank you, Ron. Bye bye.